Welcome to the 1980s, a decade that brought us some of the most enthralling space operas in science fiction. We'll look at eight iconic works that shaped the genre during the 1980s. Get ready to warp into galaxies filled with rebellions, cosmic mysteries and interstellar drama. The Zen Gun by Barrington Bailey takes us on a mind-bending journey through a decadent galactic empire on the brink of collapse. The robots have been on strike for centuries and the birth rate is in freefall. Children grow up fast here. Age 7 is considered adult and genetically engineered animals and chimeras step into the resource gaps left by the robots. The laws of physics are malleable in this universe. Bailey even goes to the lengths of devising his own scientific nomenclature. As the Empire crumbles, the rebellious planets are kept in check by faster-than-light warships which are manned by those genetically altered animals and children, while the adults remain largely indifferent. Pal, a blend of all the primate genetics, escapes his prison on Earth and steals the titular Zen gun, which he then controls with his mind. Meanwhile, Admiral Archer, three years in the job at the tender age of 23, faces the challenges of putting down a rebellion, where even the battle scenes are accompanied by hedonistic parties. Bailey's satirical tone and skillful storytelling create a fast-paced space opera. The Zen gun explores themes of genetic manipulation, the nature of humanity, of reality itself, and the consequences of wielding ultimate power. With a diverse cast of characters and a compact narrative, the Zen Gun will leave you pondering the intricacies of a universe where bizarre ideas and societal critiques converge in a thought-provoking exploration of the human condition. As we explore King David's Spaceship by Jerry Pornell, mysteries will unfold, alliances will be tested, and a secret mission will lead to unexpected revelations. Stay tuned to see how it all plays out. King David's Spaceship takes place in the same universe and at roughly the same time as the moting God's Eye. To begin with, we're on Prince Samuel's world, a planet isolated for over 400 years following heavy bombing during a long-forgotten interstellar war. When Second Empire ships rediscover it, the planet's technological level mirrors that of 19th century Europe. Colonel Nathan Iron McKinney, a celebrated soldier, aligns with the Second Empire. However, a deceptive campaign by his enemies resulted in McKinney's defeat and his forced retirement. Arrested by the secret police, McKinney learns that planets with crude space travel gain self-governance in the Second Empire, while those without it are merely a colony. His secret police contact proposes a mission to Mikasa, a primitive planet housing a surviving First Empire library where it is said lie the blueprints for a spaceship. McKinney, disguised as a trader, must return with information to aid his planet in building a spaceship. As the title suggests, the bulk of the book is about the considerable challenges of acquiring the plans and building the spaceship for King David. On reaching Mikasa to get to the fabled library, McKinney and his crew face a besieged city and entrenched and manipulative high priests who guard the entrance. There are pirates to overcome, an army to recruit, and barbarians at the gates that need to be defeated. Not without difficulties, the library's defences are ultimately breached and the plans retrieved. With the tech available on Prince Samuel's world, they must now cobble together a spaceship. Will they succeed? Will it get off the ground and into orbit? And will they secure the planet's place at the Second Empire table as a self-governing world capable of crude space travel? We'll all have to read it to find out. I really enjoyed the Second Empire vibe of the moat in God's Eye, so I'm anticipating enjoying King David's spaceship too. I have a copy on my shelves and I'm really looking forward to reading it. My name's John, welcome to Sci-Fi Scavenger, and if you're new around here, and if you crave more interstellar tales and want to stay updated on our cosmic explorations, then do make sure you subscribe. Before we look at the next book, I want you to guess what the author uses as the means of interstellar travel. Go on, guess. You'll never get it. Wormholes? No. FTL drive? No. Hyperspace? No. Orgasm? What? Yes, orgasm. I know. The Void Captain's Tale by Norman Spinrad unfolds as a mix of eroticism, spirituality and spacefaring adventure that you'd expect in a space opera. Set in the second starfaring age, humanity navigates the cosmos with an alien technology. Female void pilots must be wired into this tech, achieving a jump through hyperspace via the psychic energy released only during the intense orgasm induced by the alien machinery. Already we're in fairly untypical space opera territory. Dominique Alia Wu is the void pilot on the starship Dragon Zephyr. It seems Void pilots experience a quasi-religious ecstasy during jumps, and Dominique aims to achieve a permanent connection with the transcendent during these moments. Spinrad actually outlines the plot in the first couple of pages of the book, and then the rest of the book is the detailed telling of the tale, focusing on Dominique's quest for orgasmic transcendence. A stickler for the rules, Captain Jemro Kane Gupta commands the Dragon Zephyr, a hedonistic interstellar cruise ship combining transport and pleasure. Dominique sees the captain as her way to achieve the ultimate orgasm that might get her the connection that she seeks. 
For his part, Gupta becomes obsessed with the Void pilot as he unwittingly helps her to achieve her aims. It's an understatement to say that the Void Captain's tale challenges traditional space opera narratives. Spin Mad emphasises the eroticised nature of space travel and the interplay between sexual prowess and power. The Captain's growing fixation on Dominique disrupts his duties, ultimately leading to a blind jump with no galactic coordinates set, with let's just say unforeseen consequences. To add to the fun, Spinrad weaves linguistic complexity into the story using a mix of English, foreign and invented words. The Void Captain's Tale stands as an unusual, thought-provoking space opera, a unique exploration of human desires, spirituality and the mysteries of interstellar travel. You'd want dolphins and chimpanzees as crewmates on your spaceship, wouldn't you? In this next book series, you absolutely could do that, and you could add an alien or three as well. David Brin's Uplift Universe now contains six novels, the first three of which were published in the 1980s. The five galaxies form an ancient intergalactic civilization where sapient races engage in the practice of uplift. This involves a patron species genetically modifying a pre-sapient client species until it becomes sapient, which is then indentured to its patron for 100,000 years. This practice has created powerful clans with patron status subject to loss due to crimes or extermination. Humanity is an anomaly, unique, having evolved to a sapiens but lacking an apparent patron race, leading to debates about its independent evolution or criminal abandonment by some patron in the distant past. Humanity, its clients, neo-chimpanzees and neo-dolphins, collectively known as Earth Clan, operates centuries or even millennia behind the advanced galactic powers. Despite being considered a pariah, Earth Clan handles a challenging position with some advantages. The Five Galaxies civilization is governed by various institutes regulating uplift, colonization, and more. Earth Clan, with its informal behavior, egalitarian treatment of uplifted species, and unique languages, challenges the feudal norms of the galactic clans. As a so called wolfling species, humanity faces challenges but maintains a distinct place in this intricate and sometimes exploitative intergalactic society. Star Tide Rising is the second book set in this universe, around the year 2489. The Terran spaceship Streaker, crewed by uplifted dolphins, humans and an uplifted chimp, discovers a mysterious fleet of 50,000 spaceships belonging to the Progenitors, the legendary first race responsible for uplifting other species. Investigating the derelict fleet leads to an ambush and pursuit by extremist galactic clans and species seeking religious claims over the fleet. Upon arriving at the planet Kithrup for repairs, the Crusaders intensify their pursuit, complicating the Streaker's attempt to hide. The plot unfolds with intricate battles, mutiny and sabotage. Bryn uses different viewpoints, cycling through humans, dolphins and various alien races, exploring the complex dynamics of this civilization. The dolphins, communicating in three languages, add a unique dimension to the story. Moving swiftly from upgraded chimps to upgraded Neanderthals in this next book, let's meet Mallory Ringness and find out what he's up to. Neverness by David Zindel unfolds on the frigid planet Icefall, with the sprawling city of Neverness at its heart a hub of galactic civilization and home to the academy, a school fostering diverse disciplines. Mallory Ringness is a young pilot in training and embarks on an epic journey. Pilots navigate subspace or time tunnels to reach distant stars, seeking the DNA origins linking humanity to ancient aliens, the Ioldra. The story weaves through cosmic intelligence encounters, expeditions to biologically altered Neanderthals, told you they were Neanderthals, and interstellar political intrigue. Mallory's pursuit of the golden dream leads him to the mythical city of Neverness, where he becomes an apprentice to the Seeker. The story delves into profound philosophical questions about existence, morality, and the universe's nature. We explore diverse themes like transcendence, the consequences of knowledge, and ethical dilemmas in advanced tech. Rich world-building merges space opera with philosophical inquiry, offering a tapestry of ideas. Zindel's poetic prose describes the intricacies of the order of Seekers, including pilots, remembrances, and setics. Despite Mallory's flaws, this is a human story in a future where societal structures evolve. The plot, blending cosmic revelations with deeply human struggles, unravels against the backdrop of a galaxy filled with gods, aliens and the mysterious Vild. Neverness is a complex, intellectually stimulating exploration of the human condition in a vast and enigmatic universe. Neverness also serves as an introduction to A Requiem for Homo Sapiens, a trilogy set in the same universe. With meticulous attention to scientific details and a realistic portrayal of space travel, this next 1980s space opera promises a captivating journey to a complex and technologically advanced galaxy. Antares Dawn by Michael McCullum introduces us to a future universe where humanity has expanded its reach to distant star systems. The Terran Republic, aiming to establish stability and justice across various star systems, encounters challenges in the Antares system, a crucial hub for interstellar travel. The story introduces a diverse cast, including political leaders, military figures, scientists and explorers, 
emphasizing the complexities of a technologically advanced human civilization. The Valeria star system has been cut off from the rest of humanity for the last 125 years when the star Antares went supernova. With its fold point gone, there was no way to leave the Valeria system. Once the shockwave and light from the supernova reached the Valeria system, however, the fold point reappeared and a derelict warship came through it at a very high speed. Richard Drake is chosen as the fleet commander for the expedition party that will explore beyond the recently reopened fold point. His main missions are to try to figure out where the derelict came from and try to re-establish contact with the rest of humanity, and especially with Earth. In this space opera, the Antares system becomes a focal point for political tensions, alliances, and the pursuit of harmony among the different galactic factions. Antares Dawn stands out for its meticulous attention to the scientific, providing a realistic portrayal of space travel. It engages us in a thought-provoking journey through a well-constructed future, combining hard science fiction with a compelling story. As the Terran Republic navigates the challenges of interstellar diplomacy, Antares Dawn sets the stage for a captivating exploration of the human experience in a vast and complex galaxy. Next, we're heading to the start of an epic universe, decades in the making and still being added to now. There's conflict, alliances, politics, space battles and ordinary people caught in the middle. Can you guess where we're going? Down Below Station, a seminal work by C.J. Cherry, unfolds in a future where humanity has expanded into space, forming a complex interstellar alliance known as the Union. At the centre of this tale is Pell Station. The story introduces a diverse cast of characters, from station administrators like Signe Mallory, to merchants and refugees, each navigating the intricate web of alliances and tensions. Space is explored not by short-sighted governments, but by the Earth Company, a private corporation which becomes enormously wealthy and powerful as a result. Nine star systems are found to lack planets suitable for colonisation, so space stations are built in orbit instead, stepping stones for future exploration. Pell Station is built and the planet is nicknamed Down Below by the stationers, who also start to call their home Down Below Station. When Earth's out-of-touch policies cause it to begin losing control of its more distant stations and worlds, it builds a fleet of 50 military carriers, the Earth Company fleet, to enforce its will. This leads to a prolonged company war with the Breakaway Union, based at Cytine, another habitable world. Caught in between are the stationers and the merchanters who crew the freighters that maintain interstellar trade. Down Below Station finds itself a critical and precarious hub in the conflict. The story weaves through the lives of individuals caught in the crossfire, exploring their motivations, allegiances and struggles for survival. Down Below Station becomes a microcosm of the broader landscape, reflecting the complexities of interstellar politics and the harsh realities of living on the fringes of civilization. Signe Mallory, a central character, faces the challenges of leadership amid the escalating conflict. The arrival of the starship Norway, carrying refugees from a recently attacked station, adds to the strain on Down Below Station's resources and intensifies the political intrigue. We see the psychological toll on characters like Angelo Constantine, a Union officer trapped on Down Below Station, and Aline Quen, a company officer facing conflicting loyalties. The intricate plot explores themes of loyalty, survival, and the impact of war on people and societies. Cherry's meticulous world building unveils the socio political dynamics of the Alliance Union universe, offering a detailed examination of human behaviour in the vastness of space. Down Below Station is a cornerstone in science fiction, blending space opera with political drama and sociological exploration. Its compelling narrative, rich character development and thought-provoking themes have solidified its place in the pantheon of space opera. Down Below Station was the first book in a sprawling universe of space opera, now 27 books deep and counting. We couldn't leave the 1980s without touching on Ian M. Banks' Culture, the first couple of which were published in the 1980s. Jernal Morat Gergay, a brilliant player of games in the utopian culture, faces a life devoid of challenge and excitement. Special Circumstances, the culture's special ops, recruits him for a mission, infiltrate the Empire of Azad and participate in their complex game, determining the hierarchy of what is gradually revealed to be an utterly brutal society. Gerge, enticed by the prospect of a genuine challenge, accepts. The game, also called Azad, intricately reflects the political and philosophical outlooks of its players, shaping the Empire's social structure. As Gerge advances through the tournament, he discovers the oppressive nature of Azad's society and becomes embroiled in its machinations. The final showdown pits him against the Emperor himself, revealing the true purpose of his mission, a culture plot to destabilise Azad from within. Special circumstances manipulation becomes apparent, with Gerge serving as a pawn in a grander scheme to overthrow the regime. The story delves into the clash of civilizations, exposing the flaws of Azad's oppressive system while exploring the consequences of Gerge's unwitting role in the culture's strategic game. As the Empire crumbles, Gerge returns home, realising the extent of his involvement in a larger, unseen plan, orchestrated by the minds of the culture. Our voyage through the 1980s space opera has reached its destination. 
If you found these cosmic tales as enthralling as I have, don't forget to subscribe and share your favourite moments in the comments. There are several videos in this series and you can watch the whole playlist up here. As always, thank you for watching and until our next Cosmic Rendezvous, goodbye for now.